amazing and exceptional relationship with the US Embassy. Uh, we've been working together for a number of years. I think the, the depth and quality of our work um, is growing. Okay. And we're delighted to be a part of this initiative that supports young people um, at the American uh, Corner in Pretoria and other spaces. So thank you for inviting me. Okay, thank you so much. Benny, can well, you Well, thank you. For, I just want to say thank you for your support of our spaces. Uh, we really appreciate it. They cannot function without outside organizations who come in and, and do these programs. So we are extremely grateful for all of you. Thank you. Okay, Benny, can you introduce yourself quickly? And just to tell us a little bit about the DSB program that you're working on. Over to you, Benny. Um, hi, I hope you guys don't mind me keeping my microphone. Um, uh, Ronnie, we can't hear you. Oh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Yes, yeah, so much better. Can you hear me now? Much better, yes. Can you hear me now, Gabriel? Yes. Yes, yes oh. sure. We can hear you, Bernie. I don't have the best connect. Activity, so I am going to keep my camera off because even my voice is struggling to come through. Um, but yes, I, I am responsible for the program management for the DSBC, which has been running for, Louise, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe this is our fourth going on fifth year with the US Embassy with the um, American Corners Pretoria. And the DSBC has been focused on uh, entrepreneurship development and giving um, access to information and markets and funding where possible to these entrepreneurs. Um, and what we're looking to do is pivot towards specifically supporting the creative sectors. So DSBC 2020 was um, the first year that we took it online as well as specifically focusing on running this program for entrepreneurs in the creative sector. And yeah, we're very excited with the entrepreneurs who we're going to be, um, you know, showcasing at tonight's uh, pitch night. So thank you for all of the guests who have joined us. And um, yeah, hopefully we put on a show for you all. Thank you. Baby. I really hope everyone. And I can see that thank Maureen you. is. Um... Okay, I can see that uh, Mo is also on the line. Mo, can you introduce yourself and, uh, uh, you know, from the embassy side, uh, can you just say something <laughs> to the Good team? Thing. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. Um, and we are very excited for tonight's big event. And of course, as our country public affairs officer already said, just delighted for this ongoing partnership with the American Corner Pretoria. And uh, really excited to hear the pitches tonight. And thank you uh, so much for our judges for investing their time and giving um, our participants this really valuable feedback um, and taking the time to, to watch the videos. I'm the cultural affairs officer, the, the cultural attache at the embassy um, who has the privilege and the pleasure of overseeing programs like this and getting to work with Ruth and the team. So just a wonderful night to celebrate, thanks. Thank you so much, Mo. And talking about the judges, um, Jean, can you introduce yourself and tell us the role that you'll be playing this evening? Thank you. Over to you. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this amazing program. So I'm one of the judges who um, have had the pleasure of seeing the amazing work that you've done. It was really tough selecting the winners. I have to say you've done an amazing job and we look forward to sharing with everybody the outcomes. Thank you, Jean. Um, Mo, I saw your hands up. Do you want to say something? I was just applauding because I haven't seen Jean in so long. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay, we have another judge. Of, um, Vincent, are you on the line? I don't okay. see Vincent, um, Ruth. I've actually just sent him a message to check that he's um, he's finding his way on. Okay, no problem. Then we'll go to Salamina. Salamina, welcome. 
And can you introduce yourself and tell us about your role tonight and also the relationship that you have with the embassy? Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for inviting me, Ruth. So I'm also a Mandela Washington Fellow from, I think, 2017, yes. And I am going to be speaking to the entrepreneurs tonight as somebody who is in the creative sector um, as both on screen and behind the scenes running my own business. Okay, thank you so much, Salamina. We can't wait to hear you tonight. And uh, over to you, Vincent. I can see that you just are, are connected. Can you please introduce yourself? Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Vincent Manzini. Uh, I'm based in Cape Town, um, born and bred in Kailicha originally. Um, I run an agency called Blank Canvas. Uh, it's a creative uh, marketing and communication agency. Um, we take care of uh, brands such as Capitec Bank. So we do below the line strategy for them. Uh, your sports scene under TFG Group, your Ellen Gray Orbis Foundation. Um, our strength really is allowing brands to communicate in a very meaningful um, way with the target audience, uh, primarily black emerging um, uh, consumers. Uh, we're just tired of seeing our mothers dan dancing for chicken and on adverts. We just felt that the consumer had shifted and that they wanted someone to speak to them in a way they best relate to them. So that's what I do uh, in a nutshell. And I serve on various boards. So one of those is Sunshine Cinema, bringing sunshine, um, bringing experiences throughout Africa and telling African stories, um, as well as I serve on the African Unicorns. It's a tech accelerator uh, based in Cape Town. We bring technology closer to the people uh, and supporting young um, techies out in the world. Yeah, that's what I really do. Okay, thank you so much, Vincent. Just to add on what uh, uh, Vincent mentioned. So the, um, the Sunshine Cinema is one of the organizations that uh, the embassy uh, has partnered with on the American showcase, uh, film showcase. So that is so interesting. So we are looking forward to working with you again on that program, uh, uh, Vincent. And uh, I can see that we are running out of time, but I'll just give uh, my colleague, uh, Anna, just to introduce herself and just to say hi to the group. Hello, everybody. Great to meet you all and great to see familiar faces. I also really loved our program in person last year, but I'm excited to see the program virtually now. So thanks so much for the invitation and thank you for all your amazing work. So I'm excited for the program. Okay, thank you. One last person, Okat from the city of Tswani. Can you say something quickly before the program starts? Hi. Okay, I think we lost. We oh, hi. <laughs> I'm back. I'm on my phone. My, my, my computer doesn't want to connect, but good evening to everybody, and I'm sure we're going to enjoy ourselves. Okay, thank you so much. And over to you, Mlanga Nisi. Can I say two quick things of housekeeping just before we hand over to Mlanga Nisi and get it ball rolling? Um, so firstly, I just want to also welcome all the entrepreneurs that have gone through the um, program um, and, and have also submitted pitches um, for this event. So congratulations and thank you for being part of this. And then, um, I also just want to say that for those who are um, speaking tonight, um, I'm going to be doing some timekeeping and we have some time built into the program, so we should be fine. Um, but I will give you a little signal. And I thought the way I could do that, if you're able to keep your chat open, I will do, um, I will give, I will uh, put three stars and then the time you have left. So. It'll just be easy to, to notice, you know, if you see three stars, then you know to look at that message. Um, I just thought that might be helpful um, if not everyone can, can uh, keep track of their time. Um, yeah, and then just to say that um, uh, in the beginning, in the intros, McClanganisi will be um, uh, just introing um, all of us to the, 
to the broader group. Um, and, and so then your videos will come up, your videos will automatically go on. Um, so just in that, that first 10 minutes, just to um, just be ready for that, <laughs> um, just so that everyone can see who you are. Um, and then for the rest of the time, all of our videos will be off just to manage bandwidth as well. And this will be live streamed to, to Facebook. Okay, thank you. Thanks, and over to you, Mutlanganisi. Hi, yes, um, we're back. I feel like we're one big family now, so this is a very exciting exercise, you know. We know everyone, but also we've had some really interesting reunions um, for everyone across the group. I just want to get an indication um, from the technical side whether we're live on Facebook yet. Just a yes or something on my chat that pops ready up. To go. As we're waiting for that, sorry, we're ready to go. Okay. So as we're just waiting for that, you'll give me an indication as we're waiting for that. It's a really exciting time. Of course, it's the culmination of a long program and a lot of work that's been done. Welcome to everyone joining us on the Facebook live stream on the US Embassy page. So we're really excited to have everyone, have everyone come on. Welcome to our fourth, going on fifth DSBC pitch night in partnership with the US Embassy. Um, CAF Southern Africa, um, Speak Africa Consulting, who are the program managers of this program. This has been a very interesting period with COVID and everything. Um, and I like the fact that we've actually been really resilient and figured that we're going to work around our situations. And I, I think everyone has had a lot of time to think about what it is they're going to do with themselves with regards to the resilience that's been required from everyone. And it's also always exciting that we have entrepreneurs and we work with entrepreneurs across the board. Perhaps before I go into the introductions of the program, before I go into the introductions of, 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 of the speakers and the list of speakers, and of course our guests of honor, the entrepreneurs who've gone through this program, I must give you a little bit of background. Um, six years ago, myself and a partner of mine were sitting in San Francisco um, in a coffee shop and we were Mandela Washington fellows um, who had just done an internship program and we said, look, you know, sitting in a city like San Francisco has a very big entrepreneurship ecosystem. Every single day, something is happening around the support and building the community of entrepreneurs in that space. And that's why, for instance, Silicon Valley has the GDP that's the size of multiple small countries combined quite comfortably. And then we thought about it and we said, how do we build an ecosystem? How do we build a community of entrepreneurs in South Africa, but also a community of not just the entrepreneurs, but the different stakeholders in the entrepreneurship ecosystem, be it investors, be it supporters of entrepreneurs, be it funders, be it DFI institutions. And that's where the Desert Starter Bootcamp came from, where we wanted to basically just help colleagues and help entrepreneurs build their ideas and take them out to market and comfortably so as quickly as possible. Um, fast forward, we applied for a US Embassy grant, um, exchange alumni grant, and in the year 2015, the Desert Starter Bootcamp was born and started in Uppington, which is where I come from, and hence the Desert Starter Bootcamp, because we wanted to focus on a lot of rural entrepreneurs. In the six years, we've had an amazing traction across the board where we've worked with entrepreneurs in the, the rural parts of South Africa, down deep down in the Western Cape and the Northern Cape, but we've also had some great traction with the American corner um, in Pretoria in partnership with the US Embassy and CAF Southern Africa. So that's where we are as a journey right now. So this evening, of course, is a culmination of another 10 week program that we've rolled up with entrepreneurs in the creative sector, where we decided very specifically that the people who actually kept us sane during the hard lockdown were creatives, if you think about it, musicians, um, artists, recording artists, TikTokers, I think, are a very interesting segment to think about, but also the people who created Netflix and the content around it. And we said, how do we then begin looking at how those entrepreneurs are supported and how those entrepreneurs can get their ideas to market much easier? So I'm very excited about the community 
of people that are currently joining us this evening. It's a very exciting list of people. I just want to acknowledge a couple of speakers and a couple of people that are on this call this evening that are, of course, with us. I must thank uh, Mr. Frank Whitaker, the Minister Councillor for Public Affairs at the US Embassy for joining us. Uh, Frank, please do give us just a wave for everyone on our Facebook page to see you. And then, of course, I just want to acknowledge the CEO of CAF Southern Africa, Ms. Jill Bates. Jill has been working with the program for a very long time, and she's a stalwart of the program as well. I do also want to introduce a couple of key speakers or rather key stakeholders who make this program um, what it is. I just want to say hi, Sisrus. Sisrus, just give us a hand. Sisrus, of course, manages the American Spaces Coordinator for the US Embassy in Pretoria. Um, Sister Ruth, if you can give us a wave. If she's giving us a wave, that's perfect. Ruben Matala. Ruben basically is, is the linchpin of everything that we do with the program. All of the entrepreneurs in the DSTC program know Ruben because Ruben's the guy who keeps it together. He's the project coordinator. Ruben, do say give us a hi. And then, of course, a very strong business partner of mine and the man who's basically been running the program whilst I've been away is Bernard. Bernard is down, um, he's the program manager of the, of the program, of the DSTC program. He, of course, is struggling with bandwidth issues, so uh, do bear with him when it comes to that. And of course, just Louise Denishin from CAFSA, who's basically the fund management partner to the embassy, who basically ensures that all the programs in the embassy run well. So do, do give us a bit, a bit of a wave, Louise. And then, of course, um, I would also want to acknowledge a couple of special guests and our judges who have been absolutely amazing in working through the content and the video content and the pitches that the, the, the participants have put through this evening. Of course, Jean Chawapiwa, who's the founder of We Connect. Jean, can we get away from your end? Yes. And then, of course, let's also say hi to Vincent. Uh, Vincent is the director and co-founder of Blank Canvas. Blank Canvas is a below the line marketing agency. They're quite disruptive in their space. So we're actually very privileged to have Vincent. And of course we do have a special guest this evening, uh, Ms. Salamina Musese. Salamina, can you just give us a wave? She is, the, she is a Mandela Washington fellow. I, there's no way I can't make this joke, Salamina. I feel like I grew up with Salamina because I watched her on TV. We're basically kids together. So I'm like, I guess he is because I know. <laughs> so it's a, it's a very important one. And we're, of course, very lucky to have you. And thank you very much for making this time this evening to join us. A couple of quick housekeeping rules for everyone who's joining us from an external platform point of view. One, of course, is that we'd love your questions with, with directed to the entrepreneurs. Once the pitches come in, each entrepreneur will have a two minute Q&A session where we'd actually love to see your questions. Please put the questions in the chat box. We have team members that are currently looking at the questions and they'll be, they'll be pumping them on our side so that it is very much an interactive exercise. That's the first thing. The second thing, of course, is that Although we will be having, um, we'll be playing six pitch videos, we do have the full booklet of the nine entrepreneurs that have been part of the program throughout the period who built some really amazing businesses and who've been absolutely brilliant in connecting with us this evening. But I speak too much, so if someone doesn't mute me, I will shut up. I do, however, <laughs> want to give an opportunity this evening just from our co-partners, co -partners, the US Embassy. I want to give Mr. Frank Whitaker an opportunity to give us a message of welcoming, but a little bit of uh, background on Mr. Whitaker. He is, of course, the Minister Councillor in, and, and is, in, is a senior Foreign Service member who has 33 years experience with the United States Department of State and, of course, the Information Agency. He currently is serving as Minister Councillor for Public Affairs at the U.S. Embassy in Pretoria. Welcome to South Africa, Mr. Whitaker. He previously, of course, served uh, overseas in the U.S. Embassy in Beijing, um, Kuala Lumpur, and, and Malaysia 
and, and of course in Shanghai and China. So we're really lucky to have him. He's the father of six, a uh, big family. Um, welcome to, 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 to South Africa, Frank. Frank, of course, holds a BA in International Relations from Brigham Young University and a Master's in Public Administration from the University of South Carolina. So I want us once again to take the opportunity to welcome Frank. And thank you very much, Frank. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to the PSPC. Thank you very much for that very kind introduction. Every time I hear it, I just sound older and older. Uh, <laughs> look, I want to welcome everybody to the to the Desert Startup Bootcamp Pitch Night. I'm so excited about this. Tonight, we're celebrating the hard work and dedication, not only of those who are pitching their ideas, but all of you who worked with them, who were uh, working to fine tune their messages, you hosted them who made all this possible. So tonight is a celebration of all you too. We are a very proud partner with Speak Africa and CAF Southern Africa on the Desert Startup Bootcamp. This is our fourth year sponsoring the program. And this year's program was launched at the American Corner in Pretoria in September, 2020. As many of you remember, those were very difficult times. I hope we're beyond those. The program focused on entrepreneurs in the creative industry. We found it fitting to engage this group of creatives because the American Corner Pretoria has a newly designed space designated as an arts entrepreneur hub. We are hoping to open that very shortly. Uh, we're getting very excited for that. The program and resources of the American Corner Pretoria are designed to foster young leaders and entrepreneurs and create opportunities to build relationships with peers. Why do we do all this? Because the US Embassy, and particularly I, believe that investing in the brilliant minds of South African youth through programs such as this boot camp are important avenues to create jobs, to grow this economy, uh, and tackle some of South Africa's greatest challenges. We hope by this small measure that we contributed uh, to the larger uh, development of South Africa. I'm so grateful to see all the participants tonight. I'm excited and uh, hopeful for all of them. Thank you for our partners for working to make this such a successful initiative. Uh, M. Shanganisi, thank you so much for hosting tonight. Very pleased to see you. I hope when this dreadful uh, COVID is over that we can get together and chat face to face. Uh, he is a 2014 Mandela Washington Fellowship, uh, Fellow, which is sponsored by the U.S. State Department. Exchange programs like this are designated to cultivate a generation of leaders. You can see the product of this program in people like him. And finally, congratulations and good luck to our participants tonight. I hope I, I thank you for being part of this and I wish you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. Once again, thank you for, 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 for taking the time and thank you for taking the time to join us. I am definitely keen on us connecting. Perhaps 4th of July should be easier. We perhaps will have a vaccination going at that time. I know it's usually a really nice time to connect at the embassy during that holiday. Now, of course, before we go into the program, I also do want to introduce our keynote speaker. And as I was saying, and I joke about it, uh, we all feel like we've grown up with her. If you think about the fact that basically we've seen her all our lives on our TV screens, and we're actually really privileged to have Salamina this evening. A little bit of background, of course, Salamina has about 22 years experience in the media and entertainment industry. She's currently the producer and managing director at Sorella Media, which focuses on film and television productions, um, communications and marketing. So she's very much an, an entrepreneur in the creative space and who's entranced here, who's built traction over a really long time. And I think we're really privileged to have her. But she's also a bright star of mentor, which basically sees her committing her time to empowering young high school students with an interest in the media field. So not only is she working on the business end of the spectrum, but she's also very much committed to bringing in a new cadre, if you will, of young people. She, of course, holds a bachelor's degree in corporate communications from the University 
of Johannesburg, where she majors in socio majored rather in sociology, but also was crazy enough to go back to business school. It hurts so much. And she holds a postgraduate diploma in business management from Regenesis Business School. She's very much driven by a desire to see young people empowered and able to fulfill their goals and their dreams in business or their chosen career path. She does uh, credit the Mandela Washington Fellowship with exposing her to inspiring fellows from across the world and the continent whose projects and businesses have forever changed her perspective on the future of the African continent. I think just to perhaps steal this opportunity as I hand over to Salamina is, and I think Frank, you would perhaps also want to hear this feedback. It's quite interesting is that every Manila Washington fellow that I come across always laments that we had to go to the United States to go meet some of Africa's greatest leaders and some of Africa's greatest prospects, but it is what it is and we're glad to be able to keep that relationship going. Welcome once again. Thank you, Salamina, over to you. Thank you so much for having me and thanks for that very generous introduction. <laughs> I am really looking forward to just sharing some of my personal thoughts um, as well as a little bit about my journey. Now, anyone who knows people in the creative industry will know we love to talk. So I wanna get straight into it because I have so much that I would like to share. Um, so thank you for that very generous introduction. And uh, to the entrepreneurs, this is for you. So first and foremost, I just want you to understand that forging a path for yourself in the creative industry is and can be a really daunting prospect, but hard work and an open mind will take you far. Personally, I haven't been an entrepreneur for very long. Most of my experience has actually been as an artist working for the past 22 years to bring life to other people's creative visions as an actress and a presenter working on various productions. But in 2015, I decided to resign from a lead role in one of SA's popular soapies and together with one of my best friends, Stefina Zwane, we launched Aza TV. Aza TV was a multi-channel platform and a mobile application that housed originally produced African content. And we had over 60 hours of content and our content was seen by people in countries around the continent, as well as countries such as Russia, the UK, and even some states in America. Um, my business partner and I have now been running our media company for six years, but it took us a really long time to feel brave enough, confident enough, and crazy enough <laughs> to finally take the plunge into entrepreneurship. We had actually registered our business, Sorrel Media, back in our university days, which was the early 2000s. Stop trying to calculate my age, guys. <laughs> but it, it took us almost 12 years to finally get off the boat and into the water to swim for our lives. You see, by the time we had gotten to university, we had been on TV for a couple of years. So we felt paralyzed into inaction by the very thought of launching something that wouldn't work. You know, what if people laugh at us? What if it becomes apparent that we actually have no idea what we're doing? What if we fail? Gung, gung, gung. You know, these were all the questions that plagued us. Um, and that really brings me to my first piece of advice for all the entrepreneurs who have taken part in this program and who are now embarking on their own entrepreneurship journey. I want you to ask yourselves rather, what if I don't fail? What if my idea actually works out? I think it's really important that those of us who've been in the game for a little bit longer than you remind you that you need to quit thinking that you need to have everything perfect before you launch. You know, you need to get used to the idea that everything that we do in life is actually in test mode, right? So you need to embrace the errors, the mistakes, the misjudgments for the worthwhile lessons that they will become. Personally, I don't think traditional schooling does us any favors, but don't tell my high school teachers this. Um, but I think it's because it really persuades us into thinking that the best way for us to succeed is to know the answers in advance. But life isn't like that, right? And entrepreneurship is definitely not like that. You actually discover the answers by living the questions. So 
get your ideas out into the world as soon as you can. And then you can modify, you can edit and pivot if you need to. Think of success not as a destination, but rather as the journey itself. And please, please, please remember to celebrate yourself and your efforts along the way. I think um, being a creative entrepreneur is a calling. Um, and it's not recommended to anyone who is focused on an immediate return on investment. That's great for business, but it's not always the case in the creative industry. So if your path, if, if, if this is really the path that you choose for yourself, I think I'd say be ready to stay in it for the long haul. You know, if you have a solid idea with great upside potential and you can stay in the game long enough, you will eventually win. The goal, though, is to keep yourself informed, spread out the risk across different products, different services that you can offer, and know when to shake things up. We are creatives after all. Um, and I think that is really the difference between regular entrepreneurs and creative entrepreneurs. It's in the how we do things. So on some days, you may be the one art directing and writing and drawing and sewing and designing websites and editing videos. Um, I think you need to ensure that you actually have a passion for all of these things. And most importantly, have the determination to continue forging a way for your visions, no matter what happens along the way. We did exactly that. So picture this, right? It is the first year of our business. It is tough, but it's rewarding. We worked long hours. Um, we worked so hard, sleepless nights, you name it. Um, we even managed to hire six full-time staff members and over 25 or so freelancers who were working with us on and off whenever we were in production. We were finally living our entrepreneurial dreams. But we did make one famous rookie mistake, right? We were doing everything. Sometimes even the things that we could have outsourced or collaborated on. We were two creatives, Steph and myself, who were working so tirelessly in the business that we didn't have enough time to work on the business. The two are very, very different, right? So a year later, we had to scale down, move out of our very nice offices in Bryanston and let go of all the members of our beloved in-house team. This lesson was a bitter pill to swallow. So remember, while you're working tirelessly in the business, also work on the business. That's strategy, that's monetization. 2016 then happened to be the year that was our back to the drawing board year. And although at the time we were pretty sure it was gonna break us forever, I'm lucky it didn't. <laughs> It is also, in hindsight, the year that forced a pivot out of us that resulted in, in us learning firsthand about one of the most important things to us as creative entrepreneurs. You see, our pivot took us to filmmaking. And then we got to understand all too well the power of IP, understand intellectual property. If this is the one thing you remember about my talk today, IP is at the core of the creative industry. It's important to make sure that you don't get ripped off by other people. So you will most definitely as creative entrepreneurs have to learn about defending and protecting your intellectual property. But just as important, you have to know how to commercialize on that IP so you can make money from it. That can be through sales or through licensing. Right, now back to our story. We are currently developing a slate of nine films after our successful feature, Baby Mamas, that we released in 2018. This film was like a gift because it's the film that has taken us around the world, meeting some of the most successful filmmakers from all over. It's been selected for over seven international film festivals and is currently on Netflix International. None of this success with this film or the progress that we've made in developing our new slate would have been possible had we given up just because our first business offering in business failed. So believe in yourself and there'll come a day when others will have no choice but to also believe in you. Six years down the line, the learning is continuous. So you have three choices in life. You give up, you give in, 
or you give it all you've got. There are hundreds of creative learning resources that are available out there and each hour that each one of you will dedicate to learning a new skill really counts towards your business and your creative success. So you have to become a student of this industry, become a student of your business, of your company, of the job that you do. As the, they say, as you sow, so shall you reap. In fact, before I close, there is a really wonderful story that I'd love to share with all of you. And this story really speaks to the importance of being able to spot opportunity around you. It is an old story that was apparently shared by a man called Russell Cornwall. Since then, it's been shared by people in business circles for many years. It's called Acres of Diamonds. It's the story of an African farmer who had heard tales of other settlers who had made millions by discovering diamond mines. Now the tales of these other settlers so excited the farmer that he couldn't wait to sell his farm to search for these diamonds himself. So one day he did just that, sold his farm and then spent the rest of his life traveling the vast African continent searching for the diamonds unsuccessfully. Finally, in a fit of despondency, broke, desperate, he unfortunately threw himself into a river and sadly drowned. Meanwhile, the man who had bought his farm one day found a large unusual stone in the stream that cut into his property. That stone turned out to be a diamond of enormous value. And then he discovered that the farm was in fact covered in similar stones. Whew. I know what you're thinking, right? That first farmer had literally owned acres of diamonds, but he had sold it for practically nothing in order to go look for the diamonds elsewhere. If he had only taken the time to study and prepare himself to learn what diamonds looked like in their natural state and had first thoroughly explored the land that he already owned, he would have found the millions that he sought. Look, I don't know if it's a true story, but I love it. And I'll tell you why, because there's so many lessons that one can take from the story. I think one of the most important ones is this, the very idea that each one of us here is at this very moment, standing in the middle of our own acres of diamonds. If only we would have the wisdom and the patience to explore the work that we're doing, we could actually find that it does contain the riches that we seek. Whether these are financial, or intangible or even both. So as young entrepreneurs, I'd like to encourage you not to waste your life running from one thing to another, forever looking for the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, but never staying with anything long enough to actually find your diamonds. Yes, it's gonna take some creative imagination from you to look into your ideas, into your businesses or within your industry to know that you're looking at a diamond even when you're seeing it in its natural state. The truth is the opportunities are there, but very often they're not labeled opportunity. I wish they were. <laughs> they are often disguised as hard work, as an unwavering belief in yourself, as research, as networking, or even as taking part in the Desert Startup Bootcamp. So in closing, allow me to say good luck to all of you. All of you who've taken a chance on yourselves and have been part of the Desert Startup Bootcamp. May your action and your vision be rewarded. Go out there, have fun, create rather than compete, prepare for the road ahead, ask for guidance. You've come through this program and thus you have a really good base of help and mentoring from which to pull. Use these relationships that you fostered in the last 10 weeks not just with the people who are running the program, but also with each other. Research says the average man believes that some businesses are better than others. Instead of realizing that there are no bad businesses, they are just people who, like the farmer who sold his farm, don't know enough to see the opportunities in the work that they're in. So start prospecting your own acres of diamonds. The only limits, in our life are the ones that we put on ourselves. Good luck, especially to those who are pitching tonight. Thank you so much. I really, really, really wish you all the best in business and beyond. Thank you.
you know, the one thing I hate about the whole existing in COVID is the fact that we can't even do like a big <laughs> round of applause or standing ovations or everything, because it makes the production weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> once again, thank you very much, Salamina. Thank you for, for making the time, but also for those inspiring words. I think, of course, the nice thing about it, and I love the fact that the entrepreneurial experience for almost all entrepreneurs is very similar from you know getting in making those stupid mistakes and failing quickly and pivoting and 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 realizing that you don't need a fancy bright in the office to actually run a business and now so i know the, yeah so we call it school fees you know these are these are the, the lessons that we learn across the board um so so this is quite a quite for me a very exciting period and i'm very happy that you were able to share that experience uh, with us. I've always wanted to be like a superstar, so please feature me in a Netflix film somewhere, somehow. And you know, this hopefully I could play like a bouncer or something. So that would help. We can talk offline. <laughs> ah, thank you very much. Everyone now knows that I'm going to be a TV superstar. Don't call me anymore. I don't know any of you. So <laughs> moving right along. Moving right along, and once again, thank you, Salamina. Moving right along, of course, into our program. Um, it's taken 10 weeks for us to work with a group of 15 entrepreneurs that, of course, then went down to about nine. I want to give a special mention before I go into the entrepreneurs to a couple of entrepreneurs that have been absolutely amazing and and central to the work that we've been doing and i do want to mention um the the entrepreneurs by name you know some of them will of course be speaking to us this evening some of course won't be able to i want to say hi to neil everyone knows um, the guys know the group i want to say hi to tung tung i want to say hi to fidel um i want to say hi to to gift i want to say hi to Lebuham. I want to say hi to Litabo. I do want to say hi to Divuwo. I want to say hi to Promise. I want to say hi to Sakile. I want to say hi, of course. And once again, get well soon, Lirato. I know that you're, you're watching at all. You know, um, we're really happy that you're getting back um, to full health. So hi and welcome to everyone. So how this is going to work, everyone, and is everyone still good? I'm glad everyone's still doing well. How we're going to go into our pitches now, of course, is that we're going to watch two minute pitch videos from the entrepreneurs themselves. Now, I want you, as you're watching the pitch video, if you have any questions, be it on the chat or be it on the Facebook Live, to please type the question, because once the pitch video comes on, once the pitch video finishes off, we'll ask the entrepreneur to switch on their video so that they're able to answer any questions that come from your end. These are, of course, the pitch videos that have been judged by our, our esteemed panel of judges. And I call them panel. There was a discussion whether or not two people are a panel, but I'll call them a panel nonetheless. And I do want to take the opportunity to just introduce them. Jean Tao Piwa, of course, is one of our first panel of judges. She's been the country director for We Connect International in South Africa since August 2015. She's the founder and MD of Win Solutions for Africa Consultancy. Um, she's a member, of course, of the Advisory Council of Mining Dialogue, was also and has also served as a non-executive director and ex-chairperson of JA Africa Worldwide. So Jean holds a vast experience in, in one venture capital funding as well. She's been a member of the Dazzle Angels team, which is a female focused v VC capital fund or venture capital fund rather that is led and funded by experienced business women across the world. So not only does she carry a vast experience from a corporate governance point of view, but very much knows what we're looking for or what an investor is looking for when you're looking for a business and business with potential. Our second um, guest, of course, is Vincent Manzini from Blank Canvas, who is the founder of the organization. He's a culture activist, insight and marketing and brand specialist, of course, is an award-winning serial entrepreneur. Vincent, of course, 
has a 15-year track record in entrepreneurship. He's a deal maker and one of Cape Town's most influential voices. He serves as a non-executive board member across various boards, which includes the Sunshine Cinema and the African Unicorns. So Black Canvas, of course, has a number of notable clients as a marketing agency, um, which of course services organizations like Capitec, Sports Scenes, um, the Alec Gray Orbis Foundation, just to name but a few. So the people that we have who've actually taken the time to look at the pitch videos across the board, apply themselves and give the, the critical feedback, actually their CV speak for themselves and we're really happy about that. So, of course, um, I would not be an MC if I didn't say without further ado, I do want to call on um, our technical team to switch on um, Fidel Chivasa's video from TIFF Studios. That's the first pitch video that we will be watching. And then Fidel will, of course, come on and speak to us from there and answer some of the questions that we may have from a panel point of view or from a feedback point of view or a clarity questions point of view from our Facebook people. I think we're having some some gremlin technology issues there with regards to the sound. Yeah. So just as we're struggling with the sound, we're just going to get the team to, to work on. My project name is Tiff Studios, and it's aimed at making African films through the manufacturing process that we call Content Creation Hub. The Content Creation Hub will manufacture film concepts and tailor make them to fit the retailers' requirements. The retailers in this instance are video on demand platforms such as Hulu, Amazon, and Netflix Studios. Currently, the film production process in South Africa takes anywhere between four to eight years, which is on an average. And that is to secure development funding, marketing funding, and full production funding of the actual film. What we aim to do is to simplify the current funding models that take four plus years for producers and convert that to a few months of concept development followed by a finished product in less than one year. Now, how we aim to do that is by taking the already available production capacity in South Africa and TIFF will become the connector between supply, manufacturing, and distribution. And the stories and concepts will go through a rigorous creative process to a finished production ready product that will be tailor made to suit the exhibitor's needs. By utilizing the South African capacity, the studio gets everybody to work through collaboration that helps to expand the industrial field while growing the economy altogether. And the future plans will involve in house funding models that will be from revenue that's generated from the exhibition platforms. And this will provide quicker options to external producers, directors, and screenwriters of different experience levels who wish to make local films through the studio. The studio is a great investment uh, because the platform guarantees 100% return on investment over a short and once of period of time. And also it not only creates a much needed employment in the country, but forever expands the industrial landscape that will perpetually grow the studios industrial imprint and this is what makes it a great investment and business model thank you right thank you very much fidel can we get fidel to come on hi we can't see you ah yes we can see the bonsai but we can't see fidel's face hi fidel yes hi, ah, hi. yes no we're doing great thank you um, so once again, to everyone looking at the, through the, joining us through Facebook, remember this is an opportunity to shoot questions to the participants, but also any clarity or any feedback on the, the model itself. Um, I'm always looking at connecting people and I'm really excited that you're the first person that came on just after Salamina, because I'm looking at some really interesting opportunities to connect 
from that side of the world. I just want to check from the team, is there any questions that I have, uh, Bernard? I know Bernard is scoping for the questions, so Bernard, can we just perhaps get some questions for Fidel around clarity? Yes, we've got one question for Fidel. Um, hi, Fidel, great pitch, thank you once again. The yeah. question that we, we've got for you is, how are you going to test your content will be enjoyed by millions of South Africans before, before spending a large investment in producing it? All right, thanks. Um, is my audio on? Yes, you're on. All right, thanks. Um, now, right now, with regards to Netflix, their content goes directly to their video on demand platforms, onto their platforms. Um, currently, they used to have an option whereby, in the States, I know they did this, whereby they took some of the content and it was it went into cinema for a couple of weeks, I think, so that it can be eligible for the Oscars. But in South Africa, I don't think they've done that as yet. But this type of content is going to be produced to go directly into the video on demand platforms because this um, will already be curated from the plan and 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 and, 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 um, and the structure that Netflix already has sort of it's kind of like a guideline that they've already given. Uh, which sort of guides us to know how to structure that type of content for their platform, but at the same time, um, also curating it in such a way that it still tells the kinds of stories which they are interested in for the international market. So there isn't really much of a testing platform. I guess it's kind of like a, Netflix is sort of like a test and apply kind of platform in the meantime, actually, which is in a way good. Uh, for Fidel, that's, yeah. out of, that's out of time. I'm going to have to stop you there. I think um, we got the gist. Uh, okay. Practically, you will be publishing and see the type of distribution and uptake that Netflix can give you. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good enough answer. Um, again, thank you. Pitch. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to Mslaganisi. Okay. Right. Thank you very much, Fidel, for the, the opportunity and thank you for the pitch once more. Just a quick clarity question before we let you go, Fidel. Um, yeah. You're speaking about a investment or return on investment rather um, at 100 percent over a short period of time. That's quite yeah. a bold claim. Um, yeah. What does that number look like? Um, what ensures that return? What is the value proposition that ensures this return for an investor who's sitting and looking to put their money into it? What it basically means is that for whatever investment that we make in South African brands, um, the return that we get for what Netflix puts in the concept uh, is over and about what we make. So therefore, whatever profit that is made will be able to still pay up whatever investment that has been made on the project. Because it's actually space in dollars as well. Oh, okay, okay. No, I think there's a, there's a much bigger conversation to be had, but once again, please everyone feel free to connect with Fidel. Feel free to reach out on the booklet to be able to connect with Fidel going forward. Thank you very much, Fidel. Thanks for making the time. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, moving right along, and I'm going to abuse moving right along now and the privilege of moving right along. I do want to introduce the next entrepreneur who is Gift Dumelo Musala from Bad Divine Creations. We're going to play his video. Gift, of course, is a certified jewel maker. So Jacob the jeweler, uh, our own Jacob the jeweler, but we call him Gift the jeweler. So yeah, team, let's bring on Gift's video and then we'll, of course, see Gift after his pitch. Good day. My name is Gift Dumelo Masala. I'm the founder of Bad Divine Creations. I'm a qualified goldsmith with tough years of experience within the jewelry industry. Bodyvine is a registered jewel designing and manufacturing company 
we are recognized by the South African Diamond and Precious Regulator as a legitimate jewelry producer. The company has been exposed to some of the top international and local markets through exhibitions and industry-related engagements. But Divine offers quality, unique jewelry pieces inspired by the depiction of future of Afrocentricity using precious metal and precious gemstones and semi-precious gemstones. Our product include rings, bangles, tie-pins, earrings, neck pieces, anything jewelry related, you name them. We also offer 3D and prototype printing um, services and other jewelry related services. Our client is someone who is willing to be buying a piece for 15,000 to 45,000 rand. This individual ends and looks at buying jewelry for investment and also to wear it at the red carpet and the functions of the elite. The second line is someone who's willing to pay 3,000 to 10,000 rands based on identity, weddings, gifting, and adornment. The other client is a fashion and re fashion house and a retailer, someone who's willing to stock for their own stock for their own shops. Our unique selling proposition is that we target to to please the elites with African luxury pieces, serving them with riches of the African designs and minerals. We're looking for investment of 230,000 for the establishment of the brand and product development to put us at a better position within the marketplace. This will double our sales and it will also double our production as, and will also put us at a better position within the marketplace. Thank you very much. Someone, should I come in with the question? Yes, please. Gift, we've got a question for you. We want to know what do you think will make luxury shoppers who purchase jewelry from big brands like Bulgari and or Bulgari and Cartier choose Bad Divine? Do we have gift? We do have gift. Gift is on mute. Hello? Yes, that's better. Yes. Um, uh, Bernard, can you repeat the question again for me? The question is, what do you think will make luxury shoppers who purchase jewelry from big brands like Bulgari and Cartier choose Bad Divine? over these big luxury brands? Okay. Um, what will make them choose Bodyvine instead of the aforementioned uh, brands is that Bodyvine brings in a different touch, a different feel into the jewelry space, something that is authentically African, something that is um, not just bold, but also light, something that is futuristic. Um, I think that that um, answers, I don't know if that answers the question, Ben. Msana, were you about to say that? Go, can I go? So I was just going to ask a, a quick one gift on my end. Um, the economy is looking quite terrible. What does the jewelry business look like going forward, considering that, of course, jewelry is considered a luxury market? Is there a way you're looking to take this to market? Why would people still consider jewelry? Okay, the way that I'm looking into into this, um, um, Shanga, that's you. You quite correct with that. Is to actually put, um, for instance, if you have you, you see in the marketplace, you see people who are selling something. For instance, something like one hundred and fifty thousand. So, I'm looking at the low hanging fruits at this point um, to actually minimize. Um, uh, material, if it's platinum, that's weighing about 10 grams, try and minimize the, the design or the metal that's embedded into it. But selling this thing from a perspective of investment, having gold and platinum and diamonds sold from a perspective of um, um, investment pieces rather than just luxury. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That answers my question. Thank you very much, Gift. Glad to see you. Thank you.
Thank you. Likewise, I'm sure. Hopefully, hopefully you can make me a big change soon. So I do want to Most move depth. on. <laughs> I do want us to move on. Um, let's speak to Litabo Muraka from Muraka Interiors. Can we have Litabo's pitch video? My name is Lutabo Tia Moraka, and I am the owner of a lifestyle brand called Moraka Interiors. My colorful background as a designer led me to merge my passions, interior and fashion design, with a vision to spearhead change the way women use and experience homeware. The problem that I'm solving is that there are too many products that are being imported from China, as well as big retailers who are manufacturing their products in China, and this results in a lack of jobs in our country. In a billion dollar industry, I believe that Moraka Interiors has an opportunity take hold of the gap that's in the market by creating innovative products as well as plow back into our economy by providing jobs. My target market is a woman between the ages of 25 to 65. This woman is smart, enjoys traveling, reading, as well as buying local. Currently in the market, I'm selling a mono wrap, which can be styled in multiple different ways, as well as an oversized picnic tote. The mono wrap is an updated version of the traditional apron, and I designed it for the modern woman and the life that she leads, which is quite versatile. I am branching into homeware, and with the money that I receive, I'd like to buy fabrics, materials, and I'm currently sampling um, new innovative products, currently working on a really cool vase. And I'm gonna use the money to expand on that range as well as go into bulk production. I sell online as well as through three other stockers and to date since September 2019, I've sold 104 units of the Mono app. Thank you so much for the opportunity and please visit my Instagram page as well as website to find out more information on the products that we're working on and the innovative products that we would like to bring into the market. Thanks, bye. <laughs> Thank you very much, Lita. And I like the plug there at the end. Bernard, question for Lita. Great pitch, Lita. We've got a question um, coming in here for you, which is How will you compete with the imports of textiles and, and, and homeware coming in from China? Why do you believe that Moraka Interiors will do better or serve a better product? than these imports. Hi, Bernard. Hi, Letabo. Thank you so much. Um, well, you know, with my ex experience as a, an interior designer, I know what, what's, you know, on the market and a lot of the retailers buy from the same place. So there's a lack of newness um, and innovation with the products that they bring in, in, in from, you know, the East or from China. And with what I'm finding is that people love innovation. Um, they like seeing products that are different and which is something that I offer, you know, um, my products are very different and it just captivate the eyes. So um, my products will definitely stand out from, you know, the, the sameness that is currently on the market. Great answer, Letabo. Thank, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, God. Uh, great, Letabo. Quick question from my end. You mentioned that you've sold 107 mono wraps currently. Mm -hmm. How much does a wrap go for? What have you turned over in the last six months? Okay, so I've got three different mono wraps um, across three different styles, and the lowest one is 1,200 rand, but I have increased the prices since 2020. Uh, 20. um, and bearing in mind that, you know, I sort of launched right in the middle of um, COVID 19. But mm -hmm. my um, turnover has been, I think it's a hundred and just over one hundred and thirty since um, September twenty nineteen. Oh, okay, no, that gives me clarity. Thank you very much, Litabo. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, moving right along, and I'm going to abuse the moving right along term uh, for the rest of this evening. That's going to be my thing. This evening, I want to invite Ndibu Neshitenze from Corner. Uh, can we see Ndibu's video and speak to her there also? Him. My name is Ndibu Neshitenze. 
Uh, I'm an entrepreneur, a sports coach, as well as an accounting science student. Today, I'll be presenting to you Kuwana, a VR and XR broadcasting system. What is Kuwana and what does it do? Kuwana is a streaming is a streaming system that allows broadcasters, content creators, producers to give their consumers an most experience of a dynamic uh, and, and dynamic experience in terms of their viewing and viewing any piece of content, whether it's a sports match, a music concert, or a safari documentary. The user gets to experience the content as though they're actually there. Now, getting to enjoy this experience in the comfort of their homes, you can even invite a friend who's in Cape Town while you're in Pretoria. Kuwana uses 360-degree video content to create this viewing experience, right? Now, it allows the user to be engaged by creating a gamified experience. A gamified ads allow the user and advertiser a never-seen-before experience, engagement, and relationship between brands and consumers. Our aim is to trade our system, um, existing streaming platforms, as an, an, as an in-app option, so people would be able to get on, for example, uh, the DSTV Now app, or Netflix um, and be able to access Kuwana content. So when you look at our value chain, you will see that we trade with broadcasters uh, and producers in order for the consumer to enjoy an immersive experience. Now, when we analyze the market, we see that there's an exponential increase in revenue that is directly proportional to the demand. And part of that demand is the user wanting to be in control of their viewing experience. Hence, we see an increase in user-generated content. This demand is what's driving us to create a system that caters for those needs and allows our customers, broadcasters, producers, advertisers to meet those needs. Therefore, it is important for us to have an adapted system that will allow, uh, that will be able to work on smartphones, gaming consoles, including immersive technologies. Now, one important aspect is that customers want to pay for the content they watch. Our business model is then adjusted by commission for every ad or, or purchased content uh, that the consumer enjoys on our partner platforms, including a subscription model paid for our partners to use our system. When you look at the revenue projections, you see that the numbers can be a little bit staggering. But when you consider the number of users that our partners, our potential partners have, these numbers can be justified. Revenue is generated, generated through the subscriptions, advertisers, and pay-per-game uh, pay users with a large amount of the cost coming from the content uh, production. My technical team, I have the likes of Waste Studio as well as um, African te technopreneurs. Uh, Waste Studio being an expert in the game development and the African technopreneurs being experts in, in VR technology. So, so these two will, be, will allow us to create a proof of concept that is able to be shown um, in terms of its it's, it's working process and, and, and how it's going to function. Now, it needs a bit of equipment, which includes a 360, it's the camera, graphics card, and be honest, and the Sonic microphone. Uh, and there are a couple of deliverables that we have identified through the system. And the cost of that would be 1,400. Uh, with that, thank you very much for listening. Exciting. Can we welcome him on, Dibuwo? Hi. Yes, calling from the car. Zoom is a very interesting one. I hope you're doing well, Dibuwo. Brilliant pitch. We quite enjoyed that. I actually have a question for you, Bernie, if we don't have any other questions. We don't. You can carry on. Ah, so from a... From a technology uh, relativity point of view, or rather relevance point of view. Um, the VR seems to have had a boom and then has sort of slowly faded out. Why do you think people would want to invest and especially the partners that you're selling to in a VR technology for, 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 their, for their viewers that they've already captured? Yes, thank you very much, um, Sanganisi, and, and hi to everyone else. Well, um, you, you are right uh, in saying that VR has sort of slowed down, but what we are doing as Kuwana is uh, we are having a we are providing a dynamic uh, and new way of engaging with content. So it's not necessarily uh, through immersive technologies and immersive technologies you'd be referring to, to VR, but through your smartphone, 
you were able to be more engaged and more immersed uh, within the content. Then there's a number of ways in which we do that. Um, and I speak about multi-angle viewing. So for the longest time, uh, production has been seen from the camera's perspective. So if you're watching a live match, for example, you'd see that match through the eyes of, of, of the director or the cameraman that's, that has the camera. Uh, but in this instant, you are able to switch angles um, and have a multi, multi-angle viewing on the same content. So it's quite different um, from what you speak about because you can experience Kuwana through different uh, devices, whether it's your PC, smartphone, uh, including your, your immersive devices as well. So there's, there's a number of dynamics in, uh, included in there. Great, that, that gives me a lot of clarity. It sounds quite exciting. You know, the last piece of technology I knew was the Nokia 3310. So it's quite exciting yes. that we were able to do that. Thank you very much, Ndibuwa. Thanks for the opportunity to speak to you. Bernie, if we don't have any questions, can I move on? You can move on. Oh, thank you very much. Thanks, Ndibuwa. Once again, perhaps just a quick reminder for everyone joining us on Facebook. Um, we're playing the pitches of the individuals that we're on currently. They give us a two minute pitch and there's an opportunity for you to interact. And thank you for those that have been interacting through all the different platforms currently. Please do tag the person's name that you are looking to ask a question to so that we're able to direct it to them. Um, moving right along without further ado, my English is in top form today. My bundles are up to date. I do want to welcome Promise Nyalugu from Stru Arts. Can be given the opportunity to explore their talents to the fullest, regardless of their background or where they are located. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Promise Nyalungu from Stru Arts Entertainment. At Stru Arts Entertainment, we are a socially driven establishment that uses arts and theater to develop the skills of young people aged between five and 35. We do this to give them skills to survive in these tough economic times. Majority of these kids in these areas are faced with problems such as crime, unemployment, and all of which leads to an endless cycle of poverty. Meanwhile, a study by the South African Cultural Observatory, it showed that over 63 billion a year is, is, is made from South Africa's cultural and creative industries. Therefore, as through as entertainment, we decided that we are going to use this uh, certain industry to make sure that we give employment opportunities to the youth that are found within these rural areas. We make the youth the main players uh, and the meaningful contributors to socioeconomic growth and community renewal, giving creatives in the most deprived parts of South Africa a chance to showcase their talent. We identify and encourage the development of actors, dancers, artists, uh, theater professionals, providing them with opportunities and giving them work. Our revenue models are traditional and digital. So with the digital services, these are streaming services, video on demand. And with the traditional one, these are the traditional event bookings, ticket sales of uh, shows, towards the uh, production tours, awareness campaigns, corporate industrial theater, and our financials. Uh, in over the four years that we've been impacting change, we managed to generate a revenue of 125,000 per annum in 2019. But this year, we dropped it down a bit due to COVID-19 and we are sitting at 75,000. Our competitors are indirect. Uh, we have looked Yes, right. Thank you very much. Can we see uh, Promise? I promise I quite enjoyed that pitch. Yes, hi, Promise, how are you doing this evening? Hello, I'm good and how are you? Uh, no, I'm good, I'm good. Thank you very much. We quite enjoyed the pitch. Glad to see you back here again. Um, are there any questions from our Zoom participants? Please remember to pop them on the on the chat, but also our resident question premier, Bernie. We've got a question in for Promise. Promise, in, in light of the pandemic and the restrictions uh, that we've had with events and indoor spaces, has this caused you to rethink your business model? Are you 
considering the potential to take um, through arts products online? And how are you going to ensure sustainable sales? Oh, thank you. Thank you for that beautiful question. So what happened was that in, initially when we wanted to start the company, we wanted to actually have a media and entertainment company. And the angle of entering it from a theater perspective was that this was what was affordable in mostly rural and township environment. So with the in, implement, with the happening of COVID-19, this now had to force us to actually push at a faster pace that upgrading into becoming a media and entertainment company. And we actually started now doing pre-recorded work because most uh, clients now wanted videos that they could show during Zoom meetings, team, uh, team meetings. So we started now doing digital production. And lucky enough, we got an investment of 120 from entrepreneurship development in higher education. And that has actually helped us to be able to get like equipment to be able to open our own recording studio in these locations where we would like these creatives to come through and record. So now what we do in terms of content creation is that we do pre-recorded digital content. That's an amazing answer. Thank you very much for that promise. Great Thank pitch. Uh, are they, Sal Salamina is giving you a high five promise. I don't know if you're seeing that as well. Um, I love it so make, much. I love it. So much. <laughs> please make sure that you don't take my role as the bouncer in the next Netflix film, though. So it's going to get awkward very quickly if you take my place. So thank you very much, Promise. Thank you very thank much you. for making the time. Thank you very much. Oh, yes, I do want us to speak to Sakile from Fabric Fantasies. Tumelang, Sani Bonani, good day. My name is Sakile Mkonda, a Swazi born fashion designer that is based in the beautiful city of Pretoria in South Africa. I am the co-founder of the brand called Fabric Fantasies, a brand that is not only inspired by my cultural heritage, which is the Swati culture, but by a variety of cultures throughout the African continent. I hope for this pitch, for my pitch to be a success so that I can be able to grow my brand not only across the African continent, but internationally as well. I hope by doing so as to continue to collaborate and work with other creators and designers to form unique Afrocentric pieces that are both modern and appealing in the modern fashion industry. I draw inspiration from other cultures as a form of education, education and teaching each other our various heritages and history. I wish to have an online store that will boost sales by reaching a wider audience, both locally and internationally. I hope by doing so to continue working with other artists by using various forms such as art, such as paintings, beadworks, to create unique Afrocentric pieces that form my unique brand. <laughs> I used to love that song. It went absolutely viral very quickly and also disappeared. So thanks for bringing it back. Hi, Sakile, can we see you? Sakile? Myself? Stop my video. Ah, yes. Hi there. How are you doing this evening? I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to see you again. Great pitch video. Can we, Bernie? Resident question premier. Evening, Sakile. Great pitch. Thank you, Bernard. Good evening, and good evening we to love, you. We love your colors. We love your Afrocentricism. So thank you for flying the hack, the flag <laughs> high. Thank you. Our question with you focusing on an Afrocentric um, product and 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 product line 
-hmm. We want to know how does your unique selling proposition allow you to sell these products more effectively? Um, can you repeat the question for me, Bernard? How does your unique selling proposition, mm -hmm. which we understand as your focus on African fabrics and mm -hmm. African inspired themed um, clothing, mm -hmm. how does this allow you to sell your product more effectively? Okay, um, thank you for the question, Bernard. Um, I think what makes me to be able to sell my product um, is the fact that um, it's authentic and I am always in touch um, with who I am. And um, I do create pieces inspired by my heritage and my tradition, but I add a lot of um, spark to it and I modernize it a lot. Um, say pieces of stuff like the earrings I'm wearing, um, traditionally, um, it's worn by maidens, you know, when they go to the traditional dances, but then I take pieces like that and then I form like modern, you know, pieces and make it appealing to, you know, the modern times. Um, so I think um, people relate to the products because, I mean, at the end of the day, um, even people that are abroad or maybe are not Africans, you know, they, they do have an African touch. They do live in Africa. They do love, you know, African wear. And I think that it's kind of like a timeless, um, it's, it, I create timeless products because of that. Thank you for that, Sakila. I believe that you were our last pitch. And we just want to give a quick word to all of the entrepreneurs so that um, the entrepreneurs who pitched were some of our high scores, uh, high scoring entrepreneurs. And we want to thank all of the other entrepreneurs for their participation. Um, we are now going to hand over to our judges who are going to give comments on the pitches that they've seen. And I believe Mthanganiso will then get us ready with our drum roll. Another thing that sucks about being virtual is not being able to roll out a drum roll. Thank you very much, Sakile, once again. Great pitch. I like the colors, you know. I think yellow wind make, of course, my eyes pop. So I'm definitely getting something there just to make my eyes pop. But I do want to take some time and thank you very much, Sakile. You can switch off. I do want to take some time to actually give our panel of judges who worked through the submissions, developed the shortlist, and then the shortlist that we saw here to give us feedback across the board. I want to give some time to Jean and Vincent and step aside, which we think that is always important although there's a short list and there's all of the English we speak around the pitches, but for us, the most valuable exercise is, of course, the building of community and getting the feedback from the people who are actually building the businesses that matter. Hi, guys. Um, evening. I believe we've got one person who's yet to pitch. He said he had connection problem. Um, should we then and then proceed? Who's that? Hi, Vincent. No, that's not the case. No. Um, there was a miscommunication there. First of all, um, thank you so much. Um, like everyone was just incredible. Um, it was not an easy one um, charging this one uh, because everyone is a winner. I think I've, I've been in business now plus minus 15 years and you still get the butterflies. Um, you still um, are nervous in, in articulating your vision. Um, in selling a business, you know, elevator pitches are not easy. Um, and in and, and, and order for people to, to see the passion through you um, is never an easy thing. Because in business, I, I always make sure that the product is amazing, uh, but people really buy people. Um, and, and, and with each and every one of you, you the, the passion came across. Whatever you then um, learn along the way, you add on, you refine. You can always fix, but if you lack passion and, 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 and other touch points, it's really, really difficult for you to then realize the vision. I'll start with um, Fidel. Um, what, I, what I really, really enjoyed um, the most is that really you studied the landscape, you know, um, you really understand 
uh, your businesses and and also you 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 are adding value in, in creating efficiencies in the industry um and i love the fact that covid what what it has done really it has democratized things you know there's a level footing for for many people across different industries so to see how you've managed to uberize the the space that you're in if i can use that word it's it's it's, it's amazing um so 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 i really love the fact that you've got experience in the industry as well um I'm, I'm i'm i really really enjoyed that um gift i love i love uh, but divine the experience you know i love the fact that you're compliant i love the fact that you know what you're talking about uh what I didn't come across as well is how are you planning to reach the consumer um because i understand the price point and i understand the target markets um but i don't understand how you're going to create the luxury statement how you're going to show up what sets you apart um in terms of your very proposition and how you communicate in that outwardly as well um where do you find you i didn't see that i, I come across litabo amazing i love it i love anything local local is lekker um the questions have been asked so i'm not going to reiterate that but i wanted to ask as well in terms of i see the cash cost of business your margins as well i don't understand the cost of sales i didn't get that coming across as well i see that you turning over money but how much is it to produce and when you competing with the channels of the world how are you surviving that in terms of a point point of view in the cost of sales um i'd love to chat more about that and maybe advise and, and introduce more partners um i've run out of time um i'd love to touch on everyone but i seems like i have run out of time so i'll, I'll give it to you thank you vincent that was great and i'd like to also start on this was so difficult to do so i applaud everybody who was involved with the program the entrepreneurship was just such at a high level uh now seeing all the videos again and listening to the entrepreneurs i wish everybody could get um an award and so what i'm going to say is for me it's about selling the person because as you invest people invest in people and vincent also just said people invest in people some of the videos some people were hiding we didn't really get the personality come through some videos the personality really came through strong so i wanted to see what's the story what's the dream who's the person behind the story and the dream i wanted to see the level of confidence because i looked at it as am i if whether it's my money or the us embassy's money you know where is the money going so some of the finances were a bit um you know rushed not quite visible we couldn't quite see where where it's going somewhere a bit more clearer so um i have to say nobody was really 100% we were really looking more certainly for me at the 80 85% level um but i really believe that all of you are amazing you've still got some way to go don't stop practicing your pitches don't stop in perfecting your packs definitely don't i've been working with women entrepreneurs since 2015 and i see the improvements year after year after year so please continue to work on everything we were privileged to see the video and an information pack so it wasn't just what everybody else has seen we were able to delve down a bit deeper i think it would have been great and retrospect now if we'd actually been able to do a an interview with some of the entrepreneurs but that that didn't happen none none to say that less but i was looking for the african dream where is it what's it am i hearing the problem and the solution and then do i really believe that this entrepreneur can deliver on that so i'm actually going to stop there because i think the one two three announcements are actually going to tell the story of why we chose those 1 2 3 but really to everybody i applaud you you were amazing i wish and please please keep going thank you very much for that feedback jean and vincent it's very much appreciated of course once again and i think this is the gospel that we've been preaching throughout the program is basically a clarity around the problem very much a clarity around the solution but also the route to market and whether or not this thing is going to make money 
We joke about it in the DSPC, but it's, we're also very serious about it, that something that a business that doesn't make you any money is of course a hobby. So that for us is a very important thing that we're always looking at doing. We do, however, of course, based on the fact that we've been shortlisting, based on the fact that um, we had a panel of judges give us some input, there is a, a, a infrastructure support grant that is given to the top three pitches. And of course, those infrastructure funds, of course, are brought to us by our partners, the US Embassy, and we're always very grateful to, to the US Embassy for that support. So I wanna hand over to Frank and Jill to announce the top three for us. Thank you very much. And we're very excited to announce the top three uh, winners who will receive uh, some seed money to uh, continue their quest. Uh, first, I want to announce Aluwani uh, Lujisanwi. Lujisanwi. Lujisani. Jillian. Thank you so much. And just to echo the sentiments of the judges um, and, my, uh, and, and Frank, just huge congratulations to everybody who participated in this. Uh, I am hugely inspired by all the voices I've heard this evening, uh, particularly the young entrepreneurs um, and the judges and our keynote speaker. Uh, and it's my privilege to announce the second entrepreneur is Lebohang Kumalo of Township Luxury. Well done. And the final candidate to receive uh, funds is Tun Tun Namang. Congratulations to all three of you. We look forward to supporting you. Uh, grateful for everybody's participation. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Jillian. Thank you so much, Minister. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, congratulations to everyone and congratulations for the work uh, that's been done. I do, of course, want to close us off um, this evening, um, but I do want to give, and Louise is going to kill me for this, but it would be remiss of me not to give Jill an opportunity to speak to us from a CASA point of view. Um, Jill, Jill has been a very constant and a senior member of the team and supporting the work that we're doing. So Jill, I am throwing you in the deep end before I close off and give, of course, uh, Minister Whitaker the opportunity to close us off and just give us a vote of thanks. Well, Mklanganisi, thank you so much for that. It's always lovely to see you. Um, usually when I see you physically, I always say to you, are you getting taller or am I getting shorter? I don't know what it is, but uh, thank you for your energy and your commitment. You and I do go back a long way. Um, and it's just been such a privilege um, for me to be part of this progress process. And I'm, I'm hugely humbled um, and deeply moved by, by the young entrepreneurs, um, the creative entrepreneurs in this country. Um, and I think, you know, with, with all the challenges that we're facing at the moment, it's, it's really, it's been like a breath of fresh air for me to, to listen to all of you tonight. Um, and I know that uh, the future of our country um, is in your safe hands. So hearty congratulations and just keep going. Um, just keep knocking and a door will open. And thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this journey. Thank you very much, Jill. Thank you very much. Um, once again, colleagues, thank you very much for the opportunity, everyone. To, to connect with, with us this evening. Um, I think we have a slight miscommunication that we will of course then communicate with the entrepreneurs as well, just with regards to the shortlist, but it's just a miscommunication around shortlisting, which is of course uh, um, um, not a big issue on this instance. Once again, thank you very much for joining us this evening. Minister Whitaker. I will of course want to hand over to you to just give us a vote of thanks so that we can log off on our end. Uh, just finally, thanks to everybody. Thanks to the hosts. Thanks to the judges. Thanks to the entrepreneurs. 
Uh, you all give me great hope during this wretched time for all of us. Uh, I see us emerging out of uh, a terrible time and you all give me great hope for the future of this country and for the future of our world. So thank you very much. And thank you for allowing me to be a part of such a great event. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Have a great evening. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor Okren from the city of Tana for joining us. All of our partners, thank you very much. Let's have a great evening. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Night. Thank you. Our live stream has ended. Oh my God. Oh my God, what happened? Who go Guys, get the list? I'm so sorry. Oh my fuck. I, I grabbed these three names that were the, the three other people that were coming. I mean, that we, you know, had invited that we had originally pitched. <laughs> Who do we still have on the call? Uh, we've got uh, myself, Louise, Bernard, and Sandile. Yeah, Sandile is part of the team. <sighs> I'm just trying to look get for, like, on the call where, where were the top three? I don't know. Top three was Letago, Fidel, and Gift. Guys, I'm so Let's sorry. Let's get on the call. Oh. Hi, Chris. Uh, um, Louise, um, Ruth is sending us a message on WhatsApp, so maybe we can just give her a call and ask her to join, yeah. and then we can just quickly sum up, because we'll just need to let the winners know tonight, and the winners who think that they're not, that they've won, um, yeah, we'll have to think of a quick plan about what we're going to do for them. Uh, we might have to uh, just go and uh, add the winners' names onto the live stream uh, on, on social media. Come back to the call where we're just discussing this complete mess up, which was my fault. <laughs> I gave the name, I just grabbed two, the two names from the email, those two names were the ones that, that didn't make it at all. <laughs> and I don't know how I did that. So please why don't you just come back, we just want to discuss what we need to do. Mm, if you can. Is that okay? Okay. Okay, uh, Ruth is coming back. <laughs> okay, let me give. Oh my gosh. Um, Chris, what were you? My only suggestion is that uh, we put the the winners list like once the the video uh, on on Facebook has uh, gone onto the platform now or we just put the, the winners in the chat box but that's about all we can do eh? can we um can we uh can we invite the three actual winners <laughs> oh my god so 
sorry. I'm so sorry. This is so horrible. Oh. Um, can we invite the actual winners back onto the Zoom and and maybe even I'm not sure Frank or I'll I'll just also ask um, the sort of Ruth um, and Jill to come back and we could announce the actual winners. Ruth's coming back on the call now. Um, let me just give him a call quickly. I just want to find Um, Ruth, thanks for coming back. We were, um, uh, oh, is Ruth here? She was on, but it, she's dropped off. Oh. Letabo is joining the call. Uh, oh, why? Yes. Did we not say we wanted to rejoin? Please um, hold on. Letabo is on the call. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hey, yeah. So now I'm here. Um, just give us a second quickly. I'm gonna give Louise a call quickly. Louise is on. I quite like your video, Lee Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. It was really cool. Thanks. So how does the monograph work? So the monowrap, actually on Sunday I shot a video of how to tie the monowrap and the many different ways that you can style it. Okay. Um, so, I mean, you can basically wear it with anything. And I think because people don't understand it, I've had to, you know, like reshoot to reintroduce it into the market to say, this is what you can do with it. Mm, okay. So is it like a... Yeah, so it wraps, so just think of an A, so it, it, I mean, it looks like an apron in the sense that it doesn't have a back, it's just the front, but then the only difference is that you can literally tie it to suit your outfit and however you want. So there's like multiple ways that you can tie it. I would have actually loved to sit with you with, on the finance side, but um, sure. yeah, we never got a chance, but I don't know, hopefully. Sure, no, no definitely, I'm open. Um... <laughs> I think let's 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 connect uh, to get a sense of where you want. I just need to take this call. Sorry, I think we're waiting for Bernard. He's just called us back. Okay. Um, hi, Latabo. Hi, Bernard. 
So there was an error in the announcements that just took place with our with with the winners, and um, you have actually been selected as one of the top three who will be receiving the grant funding. Oh, okay. um, so I just wanted we wanted to alert you now that we will be issuing um, the updated communication tomorrow morning. Um, okay. We just need to communicate this um, accordingly with the team now so that um, yeah we can make up for the error and um, decide on our way forward okay super thank you so much oh, well done i was so disappointed i was like Sorry i'm gonna leave reason. now and then i saw your message and i was like what <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much you really um, just made my week so yeah well done yeah and my thank apologies you. that you didn't get the the proper Congratulations at the time I made an, an error. So oh, okay, no worries, Louis. Yeah. Sorry about that. And congratulations. Well, how, much how much did I win? <laughs> you won 25,000 Rand, Natawa. Okay. okay, super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's gonna go a long way. Thank you so much. You're very and welcome. it's in infrastructure, um, it's an infrastructure award. So so basically we would work with you to get exactly what it is that you need and we would you know help procure that and and purchase that for you. Yeah. Awesome, super. Thank you. And and just thanks for the program. Thank you so so much. I really, really appreciate it. Awesome. I'm so glad that you were able to be part of this. Mm -hmm. well done thanks thank you okay <laughs> thank you have a good night <laughs> thanks bye bye louise thanks bye okay okay how do we do this guys ruth uh, louise who's funding it is ruth Yes, Ruth has rejoined us. Um, yes. Sandile is with the embassy. Um, oh, okay. Hi, <laughs> so it looks like we've got Chris, Ruth, uh, Louise, and Sandile. Um, so let's just quickly chat about the, the... We'll obviously have to issue out a communication tomorrow to every... Well, to, because I've, I'm already getting emails from um, the judges um, regarding the the winners, um, so I will. Um, Louise, what happened? Will you actually, Guys, I'm, I'm so that? sorry. I I don't know how this happened, but I literally there was these there was this email from Bernie saying that the three people that were not part of the top six. And I took those three <laughs> and I sent them to the, to the, the people, uh, to Frank and Jill um, as the people to announce.